My name is Steve Richardson and I was on 7th and Gaviota in Long Beach during the LA riots. My name is Orlando Greenhill. I was at uh, the house when the LA 92 riots happened. My name is Richard Conant. I was in the city of Long Beach and in multiple locations during that time period. And I'm Randy Allen. In 1992, I was a police officer and I was assigned to patrol. When I first realized that the police were acquitted, everyone was very, very upset. Um, to say upset is just a light way of saying pissed off. I know where a lot of those, where a lot of the anger came from, and I saw things even in my own childhood that made me angry about the situation that was going on. You know, everyone was just like, "Wow, they finally got this on video, and justice wasn't served." It just exploded. It was that straw that broke the camel's back and all that tension that had been building for so many years um, finally just, just let go. Just looting everywhere. Looting everywhere. And it was insane. Fires were being started, large groups were gathering, vandalism was occurring, theft was occurring. So that was the entire department on 12 hour shifts, 12 on 12 off, and we did that for at least four days and we were assigned four to a car. Um, we were doing roving patrols throughout the city. You, it was hard to go through any intersection where you couldn't look one way or the other and see another police car in the city. So I remember coming outside and walking on uh, 7th Street by the KFC and I saw a guy uh, laying in the middle of the street, blood coming out of his mouth. He had just been knocked out by people that ran by in the crowd. He was a, a white man, maybe 40 something year, uh, years old. They knocked him off of his motorcycle and he was laying literally in the street unconscious, head rolling back and forth. It was one of the scariest, craziest things I had ever seen with people walking around his body and uh, not really trying to give him much help. The negative relationship between police and people of color did not begin at the LA riots. It was way before then. I, as I grew up, my parents would tell me, stay out of Signal Hill, avoid the Signal Hill cops, because they experienced some very, very severe things with the Signal Hill cops in the, the 70s and to the 80s, you know, where they would be attacked because they were African American and driving the Signal Hill. I've experienced, you know, things in my childhood that no people in their childhood should experience by police. I know that they are good at law enforcement, but there was a lot of bad things that were going on with law enforcement within our communities. And, and it's like no one was hearing that. You see things like Columbine. You see, the, see things like Ferguson, where those are these moments in time where it's it maybe an incident in a, in, a, in a very specific place, but it has ramifications on our entire profession and changes the direction of law enforcement. And I, I see that every time something like this happens, things do get a little bit better. I do believe that there's been uh, more extensive training since Trayvon Martin to, to have uh, the officers think twice before they just pull out their gun and shoot you or, or, or break your arm or do all these other things. Now it's been illuminated because there's cameras that are readily available. So if we're seeing that there are multiple incidences of police violence toward people that are really innocent, okay, uh, it's not something that's new and it's not something that I believe has actually diminished over the years. Anytime you use force, it never looks good. It's always ugly. But sometimes it's a necessary tool that has to be applied. But it's how this police department applies that tool that makes us different because we are a measured approach to everything we do and we revere life. If we're all about protection of the community, let's protect the whole community. Let's talk amongst ourselves and see how we could build instead of tear down or marginalize people based off of what you think that they're doing because of their race or class.